injured in Nigeria, there was a first child who was so traumatized that he was unable to speak. So they were unable to determine his nationality and where he comes from, uh, the whereabouts of his family and the like. So the children that will be among the 26 injured, um, there are special measures that have been put in place of which they will get counseling and then they will be allocated to their families. But people are also on the lookout for this extremely traumatized young man who they say is unable to actually speak, of which makes it very difficult for them to actually reunite him with some of his family members there. Now, we know that uh, a team of uh, South Africans went through to Lagos, and among them was an orthopedic surgeon, Colonel Theo LaRue, an international recognized trauma surgeon. Uh, and uh, there was also the aero medical officers as well as nursing officers who have uh, specialized in aviation medicine and eight military paramedics uh, that went through. Uh, are they with these people on board? Yes, according to the briefing by the Minister Jeff Hardin yesterday, he said the team landed in Nigeria yesterday around 2 o'clock. And uh, by the time the briefing started, it was around uh, half past six. He said that the people are busy finalizing uh, efforts to actually repatriate the injured. So as we speak now, there's a press briefing behind that, of which you believe some of the experts who were hands-on in terms of the repatriation are going to brief us about the technicalities of which some of the government officials are going to find difficult to brief us on. So as things stand, we are just uh, taking it by the ear, we're taking it by the eye, and then there's emergency personnel there attending to the injured. Ambulances making their way to the aeroplane one by one there, uh, and then, yeah, people are actually moving. At this point in time, the 26 people that's landing, we also know about the 80 and more than 80 people that died in, uh, in Lagos. Uh, th that number, is it, might it change uh, in time to come, or is that all the South Africans uh, that were in Nigeria at the point in time? So far, even at the latest briefing that we were updating us on the status of affairs in Nigeria, the number still stays at X4. But they said that there, were, there are some people who they still need to determine their nationality as you know they are unable to identify them as they were crushed beyond recognition when the Synod of Church of All Nations guest house collapsed uh, on Friday, the 12th of September. So the number can still rise because there are still some people of which they still need to confirm their nationality since they are not recognizable at this point in time, which actually makes it even more difficult uh, to actually repatriate them to the country because they, they, they need to determine their nationality first before they can be repatriated. The minister in the presidency, who is also coordinating these efforts to repatriate the injured and the deceased, urged all families of members who are unaccounted for to contact government in order to finalize this thing of identifying those that are beyond recognition through DNA. So he urged them to actually contact the government, but uh, they haven't been repatriated yet due to the fact that some are unable to be recognized. Well, we see a number of uh, personnel coming out of the plane as we speak. 
and uh, it also seems there's another plane that just arrived. Uh, uh, do, uh, do you know the? Uh, is there more people in that particular plane, or what is that all about? Yeah, we see more members arriving. I think it's mostly the emergency personnel, the ones that work with the ambulances. They are busy trying to usher the injured, uh, those that are immobile, from the aeroplane straight into the ambulances where they'll be taken to Steve Bigot Academy Hospital. I see a bed and a stretcher uh, being put in front of uh, the aircraft there. Um, it seems like uh, there is, no, there's nobody on it as yet. I don't know if you can see that far, but uh, it doesn't seem like uh, the, uh, the, the survivors has, uh, has come out of the plane as yet. It's only the personnel thus far. Uh, what else can you observe from your side, Offense? Uh, from what I can observe, I believe that the personnel are actually trying to prioritize those that are critical because it seems maybe those ones are in an urgent need of attention following the 10-hour flight from Nigeria. So we see more military personnel actually moving in to assist with the hands, maybe just to carry the guys out of the aircraft straight into the ambulances. But uh, the impression that I'm getting from where I am right now, the fact that it's taking so much time, you know, you need to be treated, you need to treat the seriously injured with with caution. So I believe that's why it's taking so much time. They're prioritizing the critical to take them out of the aeroplane. That's why it's taking so long. That's why we see only an empty stretcher there and the military personnel also going to work the ambulances to try to take the injured out and then usher them to the hospital. As we speak, I'll just see if they, they hosted or hoisted a patient on top of the stretcher. There's a drip hanging from the top there. And the first patient, as we speak, seems like uh, they are taking that person to the first uh, ambulance standing close by. It, it also seems that they indicate that there's more people uh, that need to come out, or is it more stretchers? We, we're going to uh, keep on and, and looking at these pictures and see exactly what happens. Um, there's a number of... Yeah, it Yes. It actually looks like they're trying to, you know, use extreme care with those that are seriously injured, maybe those that have fractures and the like. They don't want to actually, you know, hurt them further. That's why the experience is actually taking such a long time, as you speak. There's a number of uh, boxes standing uh, just in front of the aircraft, and, and I'm sure that would probably be the medical equipment of, uh, of the medical personnel that they had on board. Um, what else can you observe from that perspective? Yes, I do believe that that's part of the medical equipment that was being used uh, during the 10-hour flight as the patients were flying all the way from Nigeria and they were coming to South Africa. By the looks of things, some of the stuff that has been taken out, like the boxes, among them, some is the luggage of, the, of those that are injured, and then is the boxes as well where a medical... I believe it's medical equipment that was being used to treat the injured during the 10-hour flight as they were making their way to South Africa is now also being uh, taken out of the aircraft. There's a second patient uh, out of the aircraft right now, and they also going to hoist that patient into the ambulance standing nearby as uh, we look uh, at the pictures and the visuals coming through from the Swatkop uh, Air Force Base uh, in Pretoria, uh, where the survivors of the church building collapse in Nigeria has just arrived as we speak and uh, being treated and uh, being put into the ambulances that is waiting close by, which will take them uh, to the Steve Biko Hospital. Now, let's just go back to the, uh, the, the, the church itself and the building collapse in Nigeria offense uh, the building apparently the church was saying that uh, it was an attack uh, can you relate to that uh, from media reports that we've been getting over the over the days after the accident uh, initially we heard the pastor blame this on Boko Haram and then we heard the pastor blame it on a plane that could be seen from the CCTV footage flying over the synagogue church saying that maybe it must have been some sort of a, a bomb you know, there's, all, there's been all these excuses, but the excuses have been rubbished by uh, South African experts in construction who were saying that, you know, the, 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 the collapse is actually due to the construction. So, so far, that's the latest that we heard from it, it being the effect that the church collapsed because more walls were being built on top of the dumpstory that was initially built, and then it seems the structure itself could not take the pressure. That's the impression that we had from the engineers who went there to assess the crash site. So it's still yet to be determined because the Nigerian president also visited there and said that he will investigate, wants the government to investigate the actual cause. So we believe that 
it's best to await the results of the investigation done by the government itself of Nigeria and then try and find out if maybe some of the excuses that have been made by the pastor are to be attributed to the crash or maybe it's the fact that there was shorty construction work done on the on the church's guest house itself. Now the church did indicate that it was an attack. We've uh, even seen CCTV material here with us uh, to show us that uh, there was a plane or a helicopter passing over the building four times before it collapsed. But the, the issue of flouted building regulations are not being talked to by TV Joshua or the church. Yes, and we've had reports as well that, you know, there's been some widespread neglect uh, construction regulations and safety regulations, especially uh, there in the area itself. But I believe that the outcome of the investigation by government will definitely determine exactly what's behind the matter. As we've heard lately, the DA has, was calling on government to actually, you know, charge the TB Joshua Ministries as, you know, the rescue efforts were actually hampered and the fact that there could have been agents in South Africans were inside the guest house while construction to build more walls to, which was initially a double story, was continuing. So we had to find out exactly if whether the, 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 the statements that were made by the engineering experts that went to assess the construction site itself is truthful or whether the excuses made by the pastor T.D. Joshua, I mean, the, 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 the man known as the, as the prophet, whether uh, his excuses are to be attributed to the press or our expert in engineering statement is the one that actually is the result of the crash. As we see more patients and equipment, medical equipment being taken out of the aircraft, as uh, the, the personnel, uh, the uh, SANDF personnel and uh, Air Force personnel taking the, the equipment out of the aircraft, there is more patients uh, disembarking uh, from the plane. Now, this is live visuals you're watching right here on Channel 404, uh, where the SA survivors of the church building collapse in Nigeria arrive at Swatskops Air Force Base in Pretoria. It seems very busy there, Offensa. Yes, it's a hive of activity. We see now the Metro Police and the police themselves are actually joining the military and the emergency services guys, the, the emergency services now, to try and usher the injured out of the plane straight into the ambulances. So far, there's a lot of stuff on the floor. We think some is medical equipment that was used to treat the patient and some of the luggage that the patient maybe took with when they were going to the church, to the synagogue church. So as things stand, yes, there's a hive of activity here at South Cop Air Force Base. We've got some onlookers as well who've come from local, from the local suburb next to the Air Force Base here. Also curious about the, you know, the future of those that are injured, whether it's serious, whether they're critical, and there's a lot of interest, especially about the children as well who are uh, the injured, especially those two who have been left often after both their parents actually deceased there in Nigeria following the collapse. So we have definitely a high activity here at the south of the first base as we wait and see the injured being ushered into the ambulance. Out of all the, the tragedy, or out of the tragedy that happened in Nigeria, there was also a miracle that the South African woman that actually survived uh, the ordeal uh, for a number of days before she could walk out of that building. It's a miracle, they say. Yes. It's a miracle when we heard about that story where the lady was actually in the rubble for about five days. You know? So we start to wonder, like, uh, did it have to take that long before the assistance could come in handy? So these allegations that have been made that rescue efforts were actually hampered by uh, workers of the church is actually substantiated by the experience that this brave woman actually went through being forced to drink her own urine from the report that we got, you know, being forced to, you know, determine whether it's daylight or it's at night through a small hole through which she was also using to breathe. So we believe that's a very miraculous story to come out of the tragic incident that transpired in Nigeria. Now we talk about the toddlers and there they come through now, the toddlers that were orphaned uh, in, in, in the building collapse in Nigeria. Uh, they are there right now. It seems uh, that they, they are with some social workers taking them away. I, I'm not too sure where they will be taking them. Any update on that? 
Yes. Uh, the children, the three, as you can see on our screen, they will be taken to the Steve Biko Academic Hospital as well, where they will also be assessed as to the extent of their condition, whether the illnesses that they, they caught while they were still in Nigeria, and then they will assess them for bodily, you know, just to check on their bodies as well, whether they are fit. If maybe they then afterwards, after they've been assessed, by medical professionals that have been picked by government, then they can go to institutions of their choice where they, where they can get further medical attention. We had a report, a report earlier on uh, that says that these kids uh, are, uh, are, are expected that they'll be uh, with the Department of Social Development that will assist them in making sure that they link up with their, rel uh, with their relatives. Uh, uh, that, uh, that comes from uh, Pumla Williams, the cabinet spokesperson on uh, this particular issue. Uh, is, you, you, you had a chat earlier with Pumla. Does she seem upbeat about uh, the survivors coming back? Yes, she feels very upbeat, you know. She was saying that uh, it's an accomplishment that they finally managed to repatriate city the injured. Because, uh, you know, the deceased, they will eventually make it, but there are obstacles preventing them from being repatriated as soon as possible. So she was very jubilant the fact that, you know, even though it's a tragic incident, but government has done its best to actually repatriate them, especially after they were only informed, like, a couple of days after the incident actually happened. She says they did their best, and they're happy that it has culminated to the day where things are finally on our shores, and they will be receiving medical treatment in the country of so the the children that's there th those were the only surviving children that we know of isn't it yes among the 26 we know of three confirmed south african children survivors who were also in the church the one the fourth child but the fourth child it was very difficult to determine his nationality because he was so traumatized that he could not speak so it was very difficult to sort of locate the parents or to sort of find out where or who he came from or he came with. So as things then, we only saw three that were being ushered to the ambulances. So those children, they are going to be given social support, where they're going to be given counseling and all those things. And, you know, if you can remember what we reported earlier was that two out of the three that we've seen go out of the plane uh, are often following the death of their parents at the Synagogue Church of All Nations in Nigeria to end the collapse. So it's going to be an experience where they get counselling, and then after counselling, that's when uh, people related to them will try to locate them as well. Will it be easy to locate the relatives of these orphans right now? Can you repeat that? Will it be easy to locate the relatives of the orphans? Uh, the relatives are going to the hospital itself, as the minister has been announced yesterday, saying that it would be best if they go there. But you know, there are those anxious ones who, who try to make their way here, but we're not sure if they are onlookers or if the actual families who were too anxious to actually go wait for 12 midday to go to the hospital who decided to come here instead. But uh, the entrance at the Air Force has been strictly controlled as well, so access has been serious controlled way. It's very difficult for anyone who's not the media to actually make their way to size. We saw more patients uh, being uh, offloaded and disembarking from the plane. Another one going into the uh, ambulance right now as we speak. There's personnel uh, around the vehicle uh, trying to put uh, that uh, the, um, the stretcher with the patient into the ambulance and as we uh, take a look there there's also some uh, vehicles uh, uh, some metro uh, vehicles it seems like and taking um, uh, taking their um, going to the front of the convoy it seems like uh, making sure that they are going to escort there's also a strange looking vehicle on the side of the airplane uh, we can't really see that there's another patient uh, it seems like uh, I'm, I'm, I just want to get a closer look at that and see if that is indeed the case because it seemed like that stretcher was put down on the floor and I'm not too sure if that is a patient or just a stretcher but it seems like uh, there's another patient coming through as uh, we witness the visuals coming live from Swatkop Air Force Base in Pretoria. These are the survivors, the South African survivors of the church building collapse uh, that arrived uh, this morning uh, at Swatkop. There's the kids, uh, the, the children, the, the survivors uh, that's also coming through and it seems like they're in good spirit and, uh, and in good health uh, at, at first glance, I might add. Um, 
we, we still, there's only two that we can see at this point in time. Uh, there's still another. Uh, there was a six-year-old as well there, uh, offense that we were told of. Old, yes, I think it could be among the three that were actually taken to the hospital to the uh, ambulance, and I think they're taking them back to the ambulance that they picked up actually the aircraft. We're not sure if maybe they're taking them back there, maybe just so that they can get some urgent medical attention, or maybe they're going to move them with the ambulance and to the stand by to move to the Steel People Academic Hospital as things stand. But yes, uh, the experience is actually very slow, as I mentioned, that people are. Are the degree of injuries actually varies among those that are in the place. The others that are critical, the others with minor injuries, and the others with a serious critical uh, condition. So I think that's what is determining the speed at which they are being taken out of the aircraft. Also, some of the ambulances moving towards the aircraft. We've only seen the one side of the aircraft. There seems to be some activity on the other side as well, since we are at a designated media uh, area where they put us on. We see some of the ambulances moving there, so we're not sure if maybe they opened another door on the other side of the aircraft where some of the patients are actually being taken in through the other side. As we indicated to you earlier on, this is breaking news. These are the South African survivors of the church building collapse in Nigeria that's arriving at the Swartkop Air Force Base in Pretoria. It's a hive of activity, activity right now as uh, the uh, as patients are being disembarked from the, uh, from the aircraft and being put into the waiting ambulances. Uh, the escort of the ambulances are arriving, it seems like it. There's the Metro Police. Uh, getting in front of the convoy uh, to take them to uh, the Steve Biko Hospital. Now, just to go back uh, to, to, the, uh, to, to, to the survivors as well as the people that has died in the rubble in Nigeria, uh, Offense, uh, there was a number of indications that uh, uh, the South Africans that were there actually went to go and see TV Joshua. Uh, do, do, do we know more about that? Uh, I'm not really sure about that. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, we, we, we're going to keep our visuals uh, on the scene there at uh, Swartkop uh, and to see how many uh, patients are still disembarking there. And uh, uh, any other developments uh, uh, that, that's happening there in and around where you are right now, Fence? Yes, we saw the Metro Police actually move in position where the Metro Police and the police are moving in a position where they're actually getting ready to usher the ambulances out. So everyone is still moving into the ambulances. And then it looks like definitely any moment now we will see some ambulances move out of the Air Force Base. Some that were parked on the sidelines because they're moving one by one towards the aircraft have moved towards the aircraft as well, have joined the other ones that are parked there. So it looks like definitely any moment now we will see a movement of the aircraft that will move. Uh, what's also interesting is how this is a coordinated effort between the emergency personnel, and the military, and the police. So all all angles have actually been covered to ensure that you know the, 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 the traffic moves fast and the social development department as well allocated the social workers who are on standby as we speak some are here but most are at the physical academic hospital or at which families of those that will be coming here will be debriefed and then they will be you know cancelled in order to calm their nerves down since you know this experience has been a traumatic one especially since, you know, their loved ones who are going through such a thing at a country that's beyond their borders. Now, we, uh, we have we, we seen currently, as we speak now, the South African survivors, 26 of them that survived that church building collapse in Nigeria, in Lagos, arriving at the Swatkop Air Force Base in Pretoria. But uh, more than 80 people, more than 80 South Africans died in that building collapse. Uh, any word from the authorities on the repatriation of uh, the 84 back to South Africa at this point in time, Offense? Yes. Um, the sticking point or oh, the obstacle that's actually preventing the, the deceased to come this side is the fact that some are, are so injured beyond recognition. So what's happening is that they're busy trying to uh, get those that are unaccounted for, those that maybe are the ones that are injured beyond recognition, their families to call the government so that they can sort of coordinate efforts to try and positively identify them and then repatriate them. So that's the source of in this whole matter that, you know, some people are unable to be determined whether they are South African or not because they are, because of the way they look, because of the status of their, of their bodies. Mm -hmm. 
The plane that was carrying uh, the injured back to South Africa, it's a C-130 SA Air Force plane. Uh, what is so special about this particular plane? Uh, we believe this particular plane, you know, is very spacious and it's able to carry some of the military equipment, especially when they're going on these uh, peacekeeping efforts to Africa. So this plane is very instrumental in the logistical aspect of our peacekeeping efforts in the African continent. So, yeah, it's been used a lot. I remember even previously there was a crash that happened at the Fragensberg Mountain in Durban. This particular plane was the one used to carry the families. So it's more of a user-friendly plane. Normally we know that the SAA planes are used to carry presidents and the military. But this plane, on many occasions, we find that maybe some of the Air Force personnel were injured or they died somewhere and the families want to go uh, make peace with their souls. They use this plane to actually transport them to those locations where these incidents actually happen. So this plane is very special in that it's very safe, it's very special inside. I've also been on it as well. We were traveling to Durban where uh, some Air Force personnel actually crashed that site. So it's mostly used there for carrying stuff. It's very special when it comes to the, the logistical aspect of our South African Air Force and the military themselves. The journalists on the scene there, um, the photographers, are they, are they allowed also closer to where the uh, 26 patients are disembarking from the plane? Yes, the distance is quite considerable. It's a good thing that we got cameras to zoom in. But from where we are, it's very hard to like uh, positively identify some of the people who are there, like your high profile. Uh, government officials who are actually there, it's very difficult to sort of see them. But what is clear is we can see some of the military personnel there in white gloves walking towards the plane as if to sort of assist those that are still inside and the luggage that's inside to assist them outside of the plane. Now, we talked about the delegation from government uh, with uh, the minister and the presidency being there. Um, anybody else that has arrived on the scene as yet? Uh, at this present moment, it's very difficult to identify, but we have spoken to Pum Nahopa of the uh, government information, communication information systems, who told us about special measures that have been put in place for those that are critically injured and for the small children, especially those that have been orphans, that, you know, the social, social service department will have to work seriously hands-on on this matter in order to sort of reunite them with their families and also to provide uh, some special counseling for the family and for the young ones. Just to go back to the collapse again, um, it is now, we only know about South Africans that has perished in this collapsed building. Has it been established exactly how many people actually perished in that building and if all of them were only South Africans? The last number I heard of was 86. The fact that a majority of the people were actually South African nationals, it seems the church groups actually left in large numbers to go attend the synagogue church of internet, the church of all nations in uh, Nigeria. Uh, but the impression now is that a large number of those that are deceased are South Africans. As you remember, the number initially was 64, and there were contradicting numbers from the Nigerian government and the South African government, where the, the Nigerian government, the Nigerian counterpart was saying a total of 62 people uh, died. But then later on during the day, we found that uh, the South African government was saying 64 South Africans died before the number actually went up to 84. Mm -hmm. Now, looking at the visuals currently as we speak, you're watching live visuals from Swartkop uh, Air Force Base in Pretoria, where the survivors of the, the building collapse in Nigeria arrived a short while ago, and uh, some of the patients are already uh, being put into the ambulances. Uh, there's a, a waiting convoy uh, that will transport them to the Steve Biko Hospital. I also see a sniffer dog being used there on the scene. I'm not too sure for what is that. Uh, can you repeat that? I also see a sniffer dog being used there by uh, some of the personnel there. Uh, do we know for what the, what, what the reason for that is? Yes, we've seen this as well earlier on when we got here, but it hasn't been made clear as to what that sniffer dog are for. We just believe that since the security has been beefed up since early morning today, uh, it might be part of the security measures that have been put in place uh, just to ensure that nothing goes further wrong. Talking about those security measures, how tight is it? Uh, it seems like you are not allowed even close to that, to the, uh, to the flight. 
it's very tight. You've got gun building uh, personnel here with NIFA dogs, as you mentioned. Uh, you know, they're keeping us at bay. Uh, it's a good thing we got the technology to sort of zoom in and capture whatever that's transpiring there, the aircraft there. But just in sense, we are being kept at a distance, and then at the same time, we are keeping a close eye to ensure that, you know, nothing actually happens on the sideline where the media is actually designated. Just talk to me about the second plane again. We had a chat around it earlier on. Uh, is, is, is there still more people in the plane? Did, did you indicate earlier or not? Yes, we see more people actually here on the sideline of the designated area where the media are. It seems as the story has been reported on uh, during the day, it's sparking some sort of an interest from people who are some trickling here in small numbers. Now, uh, I'm, I'm, I was sorry, offense. I was referring to the second plane that landed. Was there more people coming in that plane or more personnel? Oh, no. Attention, all eyes are just the C-130 that you see in the screen right now. Uh, we're not sure. Maybe that other one is performing the duties of the SAA, as you know, I mean, of the South African Air Force. As you know, that, you know, business, it's business as usual, even though uh, there's this, uh, the arrival of the injured. But even this morning, from what we've gathered, even when we are, we are being blocked at the gate, like around 5 o'clock this morning when we are, um, there were some military, perform, uh, some military personnel which have been coming into the building and they were saying these guys are actually on duty and we are hampering with whatever it is that they do on a day-to-day -day basis. So I would believe that the aircraft that has landed now is just business as usual as it happened at the South Coast Air Force Base. I've just seen another patient uh, being moved out of the plane into an ambulance waiting there. And it's taking some time, though, to, it seems, to get all these patients out. Yes, it's actually taking time. A lot of things earlier that I believe that the, the experience is a delicate one. If there are those who are critically injured, and the degree of injuries is not the same among those that are inside the aircraft. So you might find that, you know, it's a tedious exercise where extreme care needs to be taken to ensure that no further injuries are exacerbated. Well, we'll take a break and we'll be right back. Uh, thank you so much for the update, Defensa. We'll be right back with you in a short while. We'll stay with some of the visuals, so stay tuned right here on AM News. in the Nigerian church building collapse have arrived at the Swatkop Air Force Base in Pretoria. As we speak and as you can see there, the patients are being offloaded out of the uh, uh, plane and uh, being put into the ambulances uh, 
very slowly, I might add, because it is a very delicate operation as uh, they take the patients from the plane and into uh, the ambulances, the waiting ambulances waiting for them. There's 26 survivors of the building collapse uh, in Nigeria. Our reporter on the scene is uh, Ben Sam. She'll be chatting to us in a short while. Uh, but uh, let's see what uh, transpires over there. Uh, let me see. There's some more boxes uh, being taken from the plane, uh, being moved, it seems like, uh, to the ambulances as well, uh, Offense. And uh, when we look closer to the plane, it seems that they are taking or they, they're going to bring out another patient. They are waiting for, uh, for the second person to arrive. Uh, what else is transpiring your, in your side? There's another patient coming out as we speak and they're taking that patient also now to the uh, waiting ambulance. Uh, as I said earlier, Fence, it's a very slow process because it's a very delicate operation, isn't it? We are broadcasting live uh, from the South Af That's the South African survivors that you see there of the church building collapse in uh, Lagos, Nigeria. Uh, that's arriving at the Swatkop Air Base uh, in Pretoria. And uh, we've been covering that live for you this entire morning. Some of the patients has already uh, been taken out of the plane and into the ambulances. That plane carrying the 26 South Africans uh, who survived that building collapse at the Synagogue Church of All Nations in Nigeria was earlier but delayed uh, we're still trying to figure out as to why it was delayed and uh, it only landed at about 10:30 this morning uh, the plane was expected to arrive at the Swatkop Air Force Base uh, in Pretoria at 7 this morning now the interministerial task team led by the presidency minister uh, Jeff Hadebe is set to welcome the patients from Lagos. Now, we did see him a little bit earlier with his delegation arriving at Swatkop. As you know, that 86 people were killed when that guest house belonging to the church collapsed over a week ago. Amongst those killed were the 84 South Africans. Uh, Offense is back with us uh, once again. Good morning to you, Offense. Uh, if, we, if, we, if we look at the situation currently unfolding in front of us, I said earlier, it's a very slow, delicate process, isn't it? Yes, it's a very slow, delicate process, as you can see, because uh, inside there are different conditions of injuries uh, at which people actually suffered. So they are actually taking due care and they are prioritizing those that are critically injured first, since they might be in the urgent need of medical attention. Uh, the police and the military also stepped in when the emergency personnel were busy trying to move out those that are injured. They're also helping to sort of fast track this process of which at Nika and I, it actually looks very slow. Uh, but we believe that it's because of the extra care that has been put in to ensure that the injuries are not exacerbated by, you know, just rushing the whole experience. It seems there's movement on the convoy as they move forward. Um, I don't see the ambulances as yet, but it seems the uh, police contingent, the Metro Police, are moving uh, to, uh, in fact, I think they, they're moving out, and uh, uh, the convoy will probably follow just after that with some of the ambulances, but there's still a number of patients in the plane, isn't it? Yes, there's still a number of patients also still in the plane. As you know, some might be attached to grips, so it's going to take some time to actually take them out of the plane. But the movement of the uh, safety personnel, the law enforcement personnel like the police, is because they're trying to clear the way in the front so that when it starts moving, then it will just be a smooth sailing straight to the Vito Academic Hospital where the injured are going to receive some medical treatment. We are broadcasting, you can see breaking news there. It is the South African survivors of the church building collapse uh, that's arriving at the Swarovskop Military Air Force Base in Pretoria. Uh, 26 survivors there this morning. There was also some uh, toddlers that also arrived and it seemed like uh, they were unharmed as they arrived this morning and they were given over to uh, the social workers to take care of them. As you know, uh, they were left orphaned and uh, they will, the authorities will try and get hold of their family members uh, to reunite them uh, but uh, I can probably uh, just if I uh, the the this uh, the, the the families of the survivors were told to meet at uh, the Steve Biko hospital uh, at this point in time and I can imagine uh, the anxiety waiting for uh, the the plane that has arrived a little bit later than expected uh, offense especially due to the fact that the degrees of injuries is not clear yet some people are critical, some have minor injuries. So 
I could imagine the anxiety going through the families that are waiting at the Zico Academic Hospital eh, as to whether their families or their, their relatives are those that are critical or maybe they are those with minor injuries. So unfortunately, uh, the families have been notified, so they are aware that their family members are not deceased. As you can imagine, the number of 86, hearing it for the first time, that 86 South Africans passed away and you are aware of someone or you're related to someone who actually went to the synagogue church of all nations. It's a traumatic, traumatic experience, which is why the Social Development Department actually prioritized allocating some uh, social workers to assist those that were affected by this particular incident. Talking about that human resource, as you can see there, it's a hive of activity at the Swartzkopf base uh, in Pretoria, the Air Force base there. Now, talking about those uh, injuries, the critical injuries, uh, do we have a sense at this point in time in terms of those injuries suffered by those that are critical? Uh, at this point in time, we're going to get a briefing at the Hangar 3, of which I'm standing in front of, where some of the experts who were deployed there to sort of assist with the repatriation of the injured are going to brief us as to, you know, the extent of the injuries and the extent to which uh, some things will need to be done before the deceased are repatriated. As you remember, the repatriation of the deceased will only take time due to the fact that some cannot be positively identified because of the extent of the damage their bodies suffered. Do we know what sort of medical care the 26 received whilst they were in Nigeria before flying back to South Africa? We, we are yet to be briefed about that in the hangar that I'm standing in front of. But I would believe uh, it was just to stabilize them, just so they could make it to the country where they would receive proper medical treatment. But some were actually admitted at hospitals in Nigeria. I would believe they were located by those that were tasked with repatriating them, and they would get extra care once they uh, arrive at the Big Academic Hospital. Now, we also talked about uh, some of the uh, survivors that had uh, minor injuries. Uh, uh, do we know what sort of injuries they had and, and whether or not it's just going to be trauma counselling? Some it will be trauma counselling and some it's just, you know, minor injuries where you just limp. Uh, but uh, we're going to determine that exactly sexually and correctly once the briefing starts at Hangar 3. We're still awaiting them. As you can see, the experience to take them out of the plane, it's a... Uh, it's taking its time. So we expect that maybe, uh, I, I can't even put time on it, as you know, the experience, it's taking so much time and it's so unpredictable. But uh, later on, as the day proceeds, we will actually know as the extent of the injuries and then, you know, how serious they are and whether, you know, the death toll might rise. But we don't expect that as things stand right now. Live footage and visuals of, of the South African survivors of the church building collapse uh, in Nigeria, uh, in Lagos, and uh, they've arrived, and some of the patients are already in the ambulances. Uh, the, it's a very slow, uh, meticulous operation in uh, taking out uh, the survivors out of the plane and uh, putting them into the waiting ambulances, and uh, we've already seen some movement there uh, of the Metro Police clearing the way. Now, the Hao Teng emergency personnel uh, uh, is currently standing by where that plane carrying the 26 South Africans who were injured in the Nigerian church building collapse uh, who landed earlier today. There are several ambulances as you can see and emergency vehicles uh, that are escorting the Tswane, uh, the Tswane Metro Police and the ambulances to the Steve Biko Hospital. They're standing by to take these people there. Uh, was there any a reason, a specific reason why the Steve uh, Biko Hospital was chosen uh, to, uh, for, for the patients? Uh, the minister did not make it clear as to why the city was chosen, but uh, from what we gathered was that the government sort of prioritized the experts which they had at their disposal, and then they grouped them there at the hospital where due care will be given to the, to the patient. They wanted them to get a standard treatment before they could go to you know, hospitals of their own choice, as you know, many might prefer to go to private institutions, but government wanted to ensure that they assess their conditions so that they don't even endanger the lives of those that they might go to other private institutions. So government wanted to be sure of their story as to the assessment of the health of those that have been injured before they go to their own uh, private institutions where they would get some further uh, assistance. 
Now, there was a long delay before we actually knew how many South Africans died in that collapsed building. It happened on the Friday, and uh, only the following week uh, we were alerted to the fact that a number of South Africans died. Was there any indication from authorities as to why was there such a long delay from the Nigerian government uh, or even from the church in terms of the amount of South Africans that died there? Initially, there was an impression created that there's some diplomatic role happening between Nigeria and South Africa where communication channels were actually hampered. But during an update briefing by the minister in the presidency, he actually explained that no, the communication channels are open between Nigeria and South Africa. And in fact, uh, just the day before the initial briefing, not the one that was taking place yesterday, uh, Minister Jeff Hardy mentioned that the Nigerian president actually called Jacob Zuma to issue his condolences and everything and to explain to him that further investigations will be taken to find out the root cause of what transpired in Nigeria and maybe possible repercussions once those investigations have been finalized. As you can remember, there was about uh, 300, almost 350 South Africans that were visiting the church in the city of Lagos. And uh, out of those, 265 were actually found alive. But as things stand now, forensic experts are still trying to identify those that were cast beyond recognition so that once they are being repatriated, they know exactly who's who, and then they can be repatriated to their, fami to, to, to their families. Mm -hmm. Now, the humanitarian organization, Gift of the Givers, uh, has been also granted permission to help the South African team there, but at first uh, they couldn't get into or onto the site to assist, and uh, apparently also with problems with the Nigerian government. Anything about that? Uh, it seems that the Nigerian government took its time to actually gain control of the crest site at which the synagogue church of all nationals is at. Uh, so the control of the access to the crest site was under the hands of uh, the personnel that actually work for the church. It took time for the Nigerian government to step in and, you know, regain control and, you know, take control of the situation, which is why uh, the opposition party, the DA, is calling on government to take further steps since there were reports from the emergency personnel who were there on site saying that they were prevented from actually trying to assist those that were crying for help whilst back in the rubble in Lagos. Now, there was a veil of secrecy on the collapse of the building and, 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 and it took some time really for, uh, for government and even church leaders to, to get to the point uh, and, and assist uh, some of these people. Uh, the Sunday papers uh, were saying that uh, if there was emergency assistance uh, prior uh, to uh, the church uh, alerting the authorities, uh, there could have been lives saved. Your take on that? Uh, yes, that's what we actually heard as well. But uh, what they're saying is that the Nigerian government, there are certain answers to which they also can respond to, you know, on the issue of uh, us asking whether if maybe assistance was actually allocated speedily and lives could have been saved. The minister and the president was also the chairperson of the ministerial task team that has been set up to deal with this matter, mentioned that, you know, uh, there were some delays, yes, but as far as he's concerned, as far as the situation transpired, emergency and assistance was allocated to those affected as speedily as possible. But then this takes us back to the story of that lady that you were talking about who actually stuck, was stuck in the rubble for about five days and then it raises questions as to how can she be stuck in the rubble for five days following the collapse at which government could have promptly responded and assisted those that are deceased. But that is a question for, you know, the law experts to answer whether, you know, some legal action should be taken or not. Now, you mentioned the briefing session. When is that about to start? Did they give any indication? Uh, can you repeat that? The briefing session. Did they give any indication when that will start? Oh, yeah, I couldn't put a time onto that. As you can see, they, they want to finalize the, uh, the, the, the ushering of those that are injured straight to the Stisbiko Academic Hospital first. And then following that, the briefing will start at a hangar that I'm at here. But uh, it was just a setup where people were putting their tripods and their cameras on the podium and everything, but we haven't as yet received uh, com communication from the government side to say who exactly will be speaking to us. Many were actually speculating that the experts of which uh, we are being told about who are sent to go assist with the repatriation might be the ones who might come and give us, you know, the extent of the injuries and the technical aspect of actually going uh, to, to, to repatriate 
those and the level of skill that was required to actually get those people out of the rubble. Uh, but the interest also is on the engineering experts who, who made a statement to say that uh, the structural integrity of the building at which that was that actually collapsed was compromised when more floors were actually built on it and then the structure could not handle the pressure and then on top of that there were people in the building when the building was being extended so there could be you know a level of uh, negligence which might be investigated as you remember the president of uh, Nigeria, good luck, Jonathan, was saying that the government will definitely investigate further as to what might have caused uh, the, the, the building to collapse. Offense, please stay with us because we, we're going to uh, investigate that a little bit more, but uh, we're going to cross now uh, to uh, St the Steve Biko Hospital where these pa patients will be taken. I've seen some of the, uh, the vehicles moving there already. Now the patients, including the three children, are now being taken to the Steve uh, Biko Hospital in Pretoria where they will undergo medical assessment and they will meet their families. I can imagine that it will be a grand reunion there. We cross now to Molemo Wa Wan Montua at the Steve Biko Hospital. Uh, Molemo, a very good morning to you. And can you update us on, on what's currently happening at the Steve Biko Hospital? Yes, we are right now at the Steve Biko Hospital. It's a very somber, intense uh, uh, mood, if one can say that, uh, with family members uh, waiting here for their loved ones. Um, we spoke to one of the family members who uh, told us that uh, he is waiting for for his brother, who, whom he, you know, last saw uh, on Thursday when he departed for 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 Spain in Nigeria, and ever since then he hasn't heard anything uh, uh, from him or about him, and he was just expressing his fear, you know, because of not knowing exactly what happened uh, uh, of him. Uh, he was uh, saying that even back home, the, the family is just panicking. They are just scared, you know, of, of, of not knowing exactly whether he is alive or dead or perhaps uh, among those that are injured. And we also spoke to the other uh, family, um, the, the, the Langford family, who told us that they are waiting for their mother, but then they called her yesterday and she assured them that she was uh, in a good state. But no, knowing their mother, they believe that it was just, you know, her way of trying to do make them not to panic. But uh, as I speak to you right now, uh, two of the ambulances have arrived, but then we are told that they only brought two patients who are critically injured and whom uh, could not uh, be kept at the, at the airport for, for, for a longer period. Now, Molemo, the family members that you've been talking to, uh, did they give an indication as to why their family member went to the TB Joshua Church? Well, when I when we when we spoke to the other uh, family uh, member, he just said it was for church purposes, but then he didn't explain as to what exactly you know were the reasons for 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 his brother to go there, other than just going for 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 a church service which he could have attended anyway you know in his country. Um, but then the, the, the other family uh, expressed that the mother went there for uh, spiritual upliftment and for also, uh, you know, to seek uh, healing for, for her ailment. Now, you did talk about the, the two ambulances that arrive currently. Has the more, has more ambulances arrived at, uh, at, at the hospital, at the Steve Beaker Hospital, or is there only the two thus far? For now, it's only the two uh, ambulances uh, for the two patients whom we are told that they are in a very critical situation. Um, they, there are still, uh, 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 there's still actually uh, uh, some more ambulances which are expected to arrive here bringing more patients. How many family members are there at the Steve Beaker Hospital? Um, I could estimate to plus minus 50 of the family members who are gathered here uh, this morning. Uh, some of those, uh, uh, you know, some of them uh, are the ones who know that their family members or their loved ones 
uh, among those that have been uh, those that have priced down this morning. But like I said, I indicated earlier on uh, with the guy whom we spoke to, uh, others don't know yet. Um, they've been chatting between uh, 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 like last week uh, the, air the airport, and as, as it is happening today, they've just uh, you know arrived here at the Steve Biko Hospital with the expectation that you know perhaps. They, they, they might, uh, uh, you know, locate their loved ones. What is the mood of the family members uh, at the hospital? The mood is very somber. The mood is very tense. Uh, even for some of the family mem members whom we tried to, you know, talk to earlier on, people are just breaking down because they just don't know what to expect. And um, others... Uh, those that we wanted also to interview uh, told us that they would rather wait and see what you know happens uh, uh, before they can begin to comment on anything. So you couldn't get any expectations from them when you did, when you talked to them. Come again. You couldn't get any expectations from them in terms of what they're expecting uh, today. Yes, like I indicated that the others uh, are, are saying that, uh, you know, they, they, they are just expressing the fear of not knowing what to expect. You know, they know that their family members will be arriving and uh, they've, they've arrived now, they're in the country. But as to the state of the injuries that they've sustained, that's what, you know, uh, is scaring them the most because they, they don't know, they are yet to see you know, uh, the extent of the injuries that their loved ones have sustained. Take me through again to the arrival of the, of the, of the ambulances at the Steve Biko Hospital. What is expected to happen as they arrive there? Well, the ambulances, uh, uh, earlier on, those that uh, arrived, they arrived actually uh, escorted by, by uh, the Metro Police. And uh, the, the patients have been prepared to be uh, admitted through the, the emergency unit uh, entrance of the hospital. And you couldn't observe that because I would like to find out uh, in terms of the extent of the injuries of those patients that arrive. You, you, you couldn't observe that. No, no, we, 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 we haven't had, uh, we, we haven't actually got uh, information as to the extent of the injuries that the, 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 the people you know, have sustained. Is there a hope that you'll get an update from the hospital or from the doctors that's treating these patients in terms of their, the extent of their injuries? I believe that is yet to be established because, I mean, these people are just arriving now. And uh, as to say, you know, what sort of injuries they've sustained, I believe that will still, you know, have to be established a bit later on but as for now everybody's just outside the the hospitals in front of the hospital's emergency entrance waiting for some more of the ambulances uh, that have to bring in uh, uh, more of the, uh, the the patients who have touched down this morning is there any more um, vehicles arriving or ambulances arriving at this point in time as we speak is there any more arrivals of the ambulances at the hospital as we speak? No, um, it's uh, the only two ambulances that uh, arrived earlier on about 10, 15 minutes ago. And the patients have been taken inside the hospital now. Um, we are still waiting outside for more of the ambulances, those that will be bringing in uh, the 24 of the 26 mm -hmm. patients, uh, those that have arrived this morning. Now, from the two that arrived now, the family members, are they there, those uh, uh, two survivors that have just arrived? Are, are the family members there? The family members uh, of those that have arrived, we still are not sure yet as to, the, 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 as to whether they are here or not. Also, that is uh, uh, another uh, 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 information that we still have to you know, establish with the officials at the hospital. Mm -hmm. Uh, Molemo, thank you so much for that update. We, uh, if you can, please try and get for us one or two of the family members that we could actually speak to and, and just find out a little bit more about how they're feeling, uh, if they're upbeat about their family members being safe at least and here at home, if you can, and we'll come back to you in a short while on that one.
That is Molemo Wa Wan Montua, our reporter at the Steve Biko Hospital. Uh, we'll cross to her a little bit uh, later just to find out what is happening there. And we'll also go back to our other reporter uh, on the scene at the Swatkop Hospital, uh, where we will find out more from Offense Satimo uh, what is happening there.